Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Spring Hill Avenue, United Methodist Church, worshiping at Westside. It is a joy to be in worship with each and every one of you on this gorgeous Sunday morning. During this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit, and let us join together in the greeting and opening prayers, which can be found in your bulletin. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Let us pray. Great God of all provision, we come before you this day to surrender what we hold. May our material giving reflect not our bounty, but yours. Creator God, who has uniquely crafted each of us, we bring to you this day our gifts of talent. May our creativity glorify your creating spirit. Merciful God, Alpha and Omega, we bring to you this day our gifts of time. May we live as your people in every place, in every moment, from this day until our last. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this time, I want to invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 139 and let us sing together praise to the Lord the Almighty. Seated. 
Well, once again, it is a joy to welcome you all to Spring Hill Avenue, United Methodist Church, worshiping at Westside. We do have a couple of announcements to make you aware of during this time. Uh, the first is that you'll notice in your bulletin there are a couple of bits of information. The uh, most loose one is uh, this little slip right here. This is our pledge cards, and these are going to be in your bulletins all through the month of October, which is our stewardship month. Uh, during this time, we try to figure out you know, what our church budget's going to look like in the following year, but we also use this as an opportunity to make a promise between us and God about how we are going to use our resources to continue the mission of Christ through the ministry of the church. And, uh, and so we, we like to do this during October because you get too close to, to New Year's and New Year's resolutions don't really hold. So we're kind of hoping that October resolutions do hold. Uh, and during the stewardship campaign, you can fill this out, this uh, little pledge card at any point. Uh, just you know, basic information, and then at the bottom there it has uh, recognizing the abundance of God's blessings. I am committed to the mission of Christ through the ministry of Spring Hill Avenue UMC and pledge to honor this commitment by giving generously. And then there's a blank for the amount that you feel uh, called to give. And then you can check the box per week, as in I pledge to give this much money per week or check for per month. I pledge to give this much per, per month. Or another blank where you can kind of fill in, I pledge to give this much at this interval that I feel like I can do once a year, every single day, whatever you prefer. Uh, you can submit these cards at any point, but I do encourage you to hold on to these until uh, the very last Sunday of October, which is October 30th. Uh, during that time, we're going to have a, uh, our, it's our pledge Sunday, and we're going to be bringing forward these stewardship, these uh, pledge cards to the altar rail and presenting them as an offering to God on that day. But we do want you to have you thinking about it uh, during the time leading up to that. So that's stewardship <laughs> during this month. Also during this month, we have our mission project of collecting blankets for inner city and waterfront rescue missions. You can drop those uh, new or gently used blankets off in the fellowship hall anytime uh, during the month of October, and we'll be delivering those at the end of the month. Also during this time, we are uh, assembling flood buckets. Uh, this is a a, a practice of the United Methodist Committee on Relief of assembling these after a hurricane. Um, and in your bulletin, you'll see another little handout that has all the material that uh, we need to in order to assemble this. I'll let you know, thanks to the diligent work of, uh, of some people here in the church, we already have uh, several of the buckets that we need. So you can scratch off buckets from that list, and we're just looking to compile everything else that is on there. We've had some donations come in, but you can see uh, more about that in your bulletin, about uh, what kind of donations we're looking for. If ever you have any questions about what specifically might be more beneficial for us right now, feel free to call up to the church office and we can get you a more accurate account of what we already have. Um, this week, or I should say this Tuesday, is a very busy Tuesday for our church. Uh, here at Westside, uh, on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., we'll be hosting the Community Action Group. This is a monthly meeting for uh, community members to be able to come and hear from their local representatives or uh, leaders of nonprofits and other action organizations in the community and to be able to uh, voice concerns. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to come to that Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. here at Westside. However, at the very same time is our charge conference. And so our charge conference is at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. this Tuesday at Kingswood United Methodist Church. Uh, if you are interested in coming to that, please just let me know so I can make sure we have enough uh, seats available at Kingswood. There are, there are 10 other churches that are going to be there for this, so we need to be able to reserve our space. Uh, but our board members will be coming uh, to that, and so we just want to make sure we have available space. But that's going to be uh, this Tuesday, 6 o'clock p.m. If you would like a copy of our charge conference report, those are available now. Uh, we can get that to you in a printed copy if you want something that long or an email version uh, and just reach out to the church office. We'll get that to you. Then, uh, later on this month, we do have our Trunk or Treat. That's going to be on Saturday, October 29th at 4.30 p.m. in the Spring Hill Avenue uh, parking lot. Feel free to decorate your trunks in as extravagant of decorations as you can because there's going to be a uh, decoration contest. And if you're not doing a trunk, 
dress up yourself in your best costume because there's also going to be a costume contest. Uh, all that going on for our trunk or treat that's starting on October 29th at 4.30 p.m. Spring Hill Avenue UMC parking lot. Um, then, the very next weekend is our Midtown Marketplace. So this is our, uh, our first ever Midtown Farmers Market that we're going to be hosting on our property. It's going to be from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, you can see more information about that in your bulletin or on our website. But the one thing I do want to let you know about is we are starting to pre-order gumbo and uh, pulled pork. So if uh, those things interest you, we do, have, uh, we do have some pricing on that. I cannot recall if they're on the uh, sheet in your bulletin, but we do have uh, that available. And you can pre-order either on the website or uh, by calling into the church office, and uh, we'll get that set up for you. You'll also be able to order the day of the marketplace, but if you want to ensure we don't run out because we already have pre-orders coming in, then you definitely want to pre-order. Um, then I just want to let you know we do have our two Bible studies that are going on right now. Our one this evening at 6 o'clock p.m. is uh, looking at the book of Enoch. And if you've uh, never read that book, um, you'd be in for a treat. It is a very unusual uh, non-canonical book of the Bible. And when we say non-canonical, it's not part of our Protestant Bible, but the, in the Ethiopian church, it is a part of their Bible, and it is a reference in other points of our, uh, of our holy text as well. Fascinating read, uh, very unusual read. You definitely want to come at 6 o'clock p.m. this evening to find out more about the book of Enoch, but we also have Tuesday mornings at, six, at 10.30 a.m. We're continuing in the book of uh, Second Kings during that time. So... I'm going to say that's about it for this morning. During this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit and let us join together affirming our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. this time, let us turn our hearts to the Lord as we receive our Old Testament lesson this morning. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8 and 11. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sew, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much, Becky. Uh, 
I don't know about you, but that scripture always reminds me of, I can't remember the band, but uh, to every season, turn, the birds, yeah, turn, turn. <laughs> During this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit and turn in your hymnals to number 707 as we sing together, Hymn of Promise. seated. During this time, as we prepare to present our tithes and offerings, I do want you to know that your giving does make a difference in the life of this church and the life of the church universal. Your generosity not only allows us to keep the lights on and uh, you know, do the very basic administrative and orderly things we have to do uh, for the church, but it also promotes ministry, growth, life in the church. It is uh, absolutely essential. Uh, your generosity does make a difference. I want to offer you this reminder from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, which says, Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I want to remind you that your giving can be done online at shaumc.org, by mail, uh, to our P.O. box, by our text to give option in the offering plate, and also our credit card kiosk available in the lobby. And uh, I will let you know, after the offertory anthem, uh, the choir is going to sing through the, adapted, the alternate tune to the doxology that we're using through our stewardship month, uh, and then I'll invite you to stand after that, so there will be a preliminary aspect to the doxology today. But with that being said, let us go to the Lord together in prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the many blessings which you have poured out upon us, both seen and unseen. Now as we return a portion of those blessings back to you, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver, that each might be used to glorify and magnify your name among the earth and that by our generosity we might see the world transformed. We ask this in your perfect and holy name. Amen. And the door will be opened 
You may be seated. <laughs> well, in this uh, time, I'm going to have, for as we come to our children's moment, I'm going to ask the children to hang out for just a minute there, where you are. I have something this morning, though. I stole it from the fellowship hall. And I'm, what's that? No, I stole it. I didn't borrow it. It's mine. <laughs> Uh, I have here a nice little analog clock. Don't see these too often anymore. Uh, I don't know, unless you like analog clocks. Um, they take a little bit more effort to read than digital. Uh, who can read for us what time it is right now? 1026, 1027, yeah, something like that. Is that accurate? Hey, that's actually, that's not too bad. Very good clock, very good. Uh, <laughs> this is durable. Yeah, uh, I've always found these very interesting because um, it takes two different, it takes two full revolutions of the hour hand to cover a full day. Yeah, I always thought it'd be easier to just do one revolution. I never understood the two, but it takes two whole turns of the little hand to make up a day but then it's only one turn of the big hand to make up an hour. Uh, we, as human beings, have been counting time for a very long time, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and we haven't always been the most accurate with it. Uh, in fact, does anybody know how a clock like this works? There is a battery, yes, absolutely. And what does the battery do? Gives it power in order to? Yeah, to move the hands. And the hands are set to? Yes, but what? <laughs> to? Yes, there, if you can, this is really loud to me, but I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> yeah, every second there is a little gear that's turning in there that's uh, clicking uh, in order to move a couple of other gears that turn these hands. Um, but we recently have become a little bit more accurate in our uh, timekeeping with uh, something called an atomic clock. Does anybody know how that works? What's that? Uh, yes, 
And where does the satellite get that signal, or where does the satellite get that from? It's the measure of a single radioactive isotope and how many thousands of times it bounces back and forth. And how many times it bounces back and forth, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's like several thousand times, makes up one second. And this is about as accurate as we can actually be with counting time. Uh, but time, for us, is uh, not about accuracy. It's about how we feel it. For instance, Walker, how long does it feel for this big hand to go all the way around? Very long, <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know, somebody else. Orland, uh, how long does it feel for the little hand to go around twice for you? Feel like a long time, short time? Really? Yeah, the hour hand. Oh. To cover a full day, how long does that feel? Really? Yeah, 20, 24, for a full 24 hours. Does that, is that a long time, short time? At <laughs> my point in life, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all about our perception of time and the way that we feel it. It can feel like a really long time for, this, uh, for one of these hands to tick across, but then all of a sudden, before you know it, the best day of your life can be gone. And the worst day of your life might be dragging on. It's all about how we see time. Well, whenever we're working for God, whenever we're doing good work, this time becomes a little bit more meaningful. And I think that this is a better way to measure time than by how frequently a gear ticks or how, uh, how quickly a radioactive isotope bounces back and forth. But considering how meaningful the time is that we have. And time is made more meaningful by doing things that are worthwhile doing things like spending time with loved ones, something, doing something that we really enjoy, uh, and setting aside time for things to be meaningful, like doing the work that God has called us to do, loving on people, seeking justice, loving mercy, walking humbly with God. So let's try to make time a little bit more meaningful. So let's pray. If you would like, you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the time you give us. May we use this time and make it meaningful as you have called us to do. Amen. Awesome. Thank you all so much for participating. We'll be jumping back with Kids Shine next week. Um, for now, let us have the New Testament lesson this morning. Our New Testament lesson comes from James chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there, doing business and making money. Yet, you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And together we say, Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us go to the Lord together in prayer. God, you have granted us time. And it might be something we squander, and every so often it might be something we use well. But we know that this time that you have given us is for a purpose to do something meaningful in our lives. And so we ask today that you would clearly inscribe before us how we can most meaningfully use this time you have given us and how we can be good stewards of this time that we might, as your people, make a difference in the time that others have. 
And so during this time, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts on your words be good and pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I, I think the choir might be curious as to something that I've hidden up here, <laughs> if, you, if you saw. Uh, I'll break these out now. Got some stuff for us today. <laughs> Ping pong balls, as it were. Um, set this here. So uh, every so often, the uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics puts out a survey called the American Time Use Survey. And this is a survey that essentially breaks down into very fine categories how the average American spends each hour of the day. Fascinating study. Uh, the most recent one was done in 2021, so things have, might be a little bit different now that we're coming uh, kind of to the end of 2022, which is wild to think about. Um, but I want to actually demonstrate their findings for you in a very tangible way. And so uh, one ping pong ball is representative of one hour. And we're going to be looking at how many hours we spend doing certain things in a week. I was going to do each ping pong ball represents a minute, and we were going to look at uh, how, many, how we spend each minute of a year, because rent had inspired me, 525,600 minutes. <laughs> but that's a lot of ping pong balls. Uh, <laughs> so we're, not gonna, we're just going to look at hours in a week. Uh, the av <laughs> I almost said the average week. That, that doesn't make any sense. Every single week has the exact same number of hours in it. 168 hours, to be precise. There are 168 hours in a week. Uh, we, as uh, the average American, I guess I should say, spends roughly nine hours of that week, uh, of, the, of each day, sleeping which is a total of 63 hours. <laughs> I saw a couple people shaking their head like, nine hours? I, I know, I, 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 was, I was pretty shocked by that too. That's just what the survey found out. So you know, for those of you who are out there getting like seven or six or five hours a night, I guess there's another person out there who's getting like 15 hours of sleep. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how this works, but the, <laughs> the Bureau found uh, on average 63 hours of our week are spent sleeping. So again, this might not necessarily apply to you, but this is how we're going to be pointing it out. 63 hours of, of our 168 hour week spent asleep. That leaves us 105 hours left in the day. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at uh, how, well, I guess I should ask, what do you think is the next substantial amount of time that we use our hours on? Work, yeah. Work and or school, uh, if you're in school. Our pink balls today will be our work time. Uh, on average, 47 hours of our week. And I know some of you are like, I only have a 40 hour work week. Yeah, we take that work home with us. Yeah, it's not always the p pure 40 hour work week, right? There's, there's always a little bit more. The average American, 47 hours of their week spent working. Uh, after that, we have our lime green balls. And this one, uh, this is a, a conglomerate of a couple of different things, but they average out to uh, one category. Can anybody guess what the next amount of thing is? What's that? Relaxation, Relaxation. to an extent. Leisure, Leisure to, to an extent. This is a very specific type, though. And it's, what's that? Eating. Not eating, believe it or not. Screen time, yes. 21 hours of the average American's week is spent in front of a screen. And this is non-work related screens. Watching TV, scrolling through social media, uh, the, the advent of social media certainly has bumped this up, but 21 hours of our week spent in front of a screen. And the reason why I separate this from actual leisure time is because it's not leisurely for your brain. <laughs> it's not. It's uh, horrible for your brain. Uh, don't get me wrong, I participate. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, go figure. Then we get into 11 hours of our week spent doing 
household activities, chores, uh, laundry, dishes, cooking, cl uh, cleaning, yard work. Again, this is the average person, 11 hours. From there, we have the, uh, oh, there it is. Ooh, that's interesting. Another 10 hours used of, this is actual leisure time. Uh, but not just leisure time, extracurricular time. Uh, so this might be, uh, you know, for people who are in school, maybe this is like participating in a sport or club or something like that. Uh, for others, this is like reading a book, something like that. 10 hours of our week in uh, actual leisure time, non-screen related leisure time. 10 hours. Our next 10 hours, believe it or not, eating average. Some people eat faster than others. Some people have less, fewer meals. Other people, like myself, have many more meals in the day. <laughs> Uh, and s some people, you know, eat while they work, stuff like that. On average, 10 hours a week eating. Then, four hours. <laughs> My red ball back here. Five hours of our week spent uh, doing miscellaneous things. Uh, this is anything from like our like uh, morning routine to driving, time spent in a car, uh, miscellaneous activities that we can't really quantify anywhere else. About five hours of our week spent doing that sort of stuff. There's one hour left. And this is the average American, remember, not everybody, but one hour left spent on religious or volunteer-based activities. Now sure, some people have a little bit more time than that uh, they use, but there's your week in front of you. Let's look at this in a different light. Sleep. work and school, well, that's not good, <laughs> yikes, sticky screen time, hmm. I'm going to remember what this one was, oh yeah, household activities, chores related, stuff like that. Actual leisure time, eating, miscellaneous, religious volunteer based. What does your week look like? What do you see the most of here? Work and sleep, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm going to leave this up here for us for today uh, as just the realization of what we're talking about as we're talking about time, time as a resource, time as something that is given to us, yet we choose how we use it. Uh, our Old Testament lesson, Ecclesiastes, uh, made famous by the birds, uh, <laughs> reminds us that life is seasonal, a time for everything, every purpose under heaven. And each season presents different priorities. Different things in our lives end up becoming different priorities. This representation isn't easy because people have different priorities and choose to spend their time in different ways. Remember, this is just average. Uh, but at each point in our lives, each season of our lives, we have different priorities. For instance, when you're born, your priority is eat and sleep other bodily functions. Pretty basic, would love to be able to go back to those days. When you're in childhood, your priorities shift, and there's a lot more of wanting those uh, light purple colored balls, wanting that fun, 
and maybe some of those green colored balls screen time as well. But our priorities shift. We want to enjoy life. When we get into adolescence, things shift again and uh, they become a little bit more about uh, interpersonal relationships and the way that we spend our time in adolescence is more about connecting with our peers, connecting with people uh, who are similar to us. Eventually we get into young adulthood and of course, you know, up until this point, our school has definitely been dominating a large part of our lives, but that's involuntary for many. Uh, we then in young adulthood start to prioritize things like work, um, and there's still a little bit of those relationships there, but work starts to become more of a priority, uh, particularly as uh, in young adulthood you see how expensive it is to be alive. Uh, then we get into older adulthood, and our priorities shift again, but they're a little bit more family-oriented now than anything else, at least unless you're in a Hallmark movie, and in which case your priorities are work until you go through some kind of horrible change in your life to realize that your priorities should be family. And by the time we hit retirement age, our priorities have shifted again. And the way that we spend our time is uh, contingent on these seasons. Yet, in each of these seasons, there remains a constant. And here's where I give that very cheesy pastoral answer. God. There remains a constant God. So now, I want to ask a silly question. How much time do you think God spends on us? And this is a silly question because God is transcendent beyond time. So even placing God in time anthropomorphizes God to an extent that's just unhealthy for our faith. But let's just consider for a moment. How much time do you think God spends on humanity? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, basically working the Waffle House schedule. Yeah, definitely. I would imagine so. Yeah, maybe even, maybe even 25 hours out of the day because it's God and that's what God does, right? Uh, all of time, God prioritizes on humanity. Now, how much of our time is spent on God? The average American, it's one hour. Uh, and that's, the, that's uh, assuming you know, Christianity being uh, the dominant aspect of that. Uh, really, the way things are trending, it's not actually even focused on God as much as it, as it is volunteering, stuff like that. But still, yeah, one hour, God's putting in 25, we're putting in one. Uh, well, excuse me, God, God's putting in 168 hours a week, we're putting in one hour a week, not a day. Uh, why is that? Why is that the reality for us? Why is there no equal reciprocity? Yeah, sure, God's God and God can choose what to do with God's time, you know, whatever. We can't, we don't really have that same luxury. We have to sleep, we have to eat. We kind of have to do the whole thing that life demands us do. Yeah. Absolutely. And I am not saying that we even need to abandon our schedules and devote ourselves to endless ministry. Unless you're feeling called to that, in which case, please let me know because I need to add your name to our charge conference paperwork before this Tuesday. What I am saying, though, is that our priorities may need to shift in the way we use our time. For example, 21 hours a week in front of a screen do I really need to be doing that? Depends on what time of day it is. The later it gets, the more I'm saying yes. You see, on average, we spend one hour per week doing a religious activity or volunteering activity. And typically, this is going to church. Now, if you know me well enough, you know that I'm not about to sit here and say that you need to spend more time at church. In fact, one hour is plenty. I'm not going to tell you you need to be spending more time at church. So why then does it matter how much time we spend doing religious activities? I mean, I'll ask you to consider for a moment, again, this is not just coming to church. Uh, anybody want to point out for us the points in scripture where uh, we're told, go to church. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. How often, however, does 
Scripture tell us what God actually wants from us? Hint, hint, it's not going to church. I'm very fine with church. You know, obviously, I'd be out of a job without church. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for you all to be here and for us to fellowship together and do all the stuff and for me to talk for a really long time because I enjoy the attention. But that's not what this whole time exercise is about, finding more time to go to church. I, I would even argue it's not even about finding more time to spend in prayer or stuff like that. What does the Lord require of you? Yes, Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40. What do the commandments say to you there? The first, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Or, you know, my personal favorite since I'm a, kind of the author there, Micah 6, 8. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Amos chapter 6, let justice roll down like rivers and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 1 John chapter 1, love, this is the new commandment I give to you, to love one another as I have loved you. So, how much of our time is, during the week is spent doing the good that we are called to do? And I don't mean attending church, believe it or not but doing the good that we are called to do. I must admit, that uh, chunk of time pales in comparison to my screen time. Pales in comparison to the amount of time I spend eating. Yes, life is seasonal, but the time is always right to do good. In fact, James even tells us that failing to do what is right is sinful. And now, I'm typically cautious about this word sinful because of the way that it's been used to hurt people in the church world, but for something to be sinful, the understanding is that it's harmful to our relationships, our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, our relationship with ourselves, or our relationship with our world. And to this end, I do agree with James, saying that we will put off doing something, doing what Christ has called us to do, because we'll have time at a later date means that we have neglected the moment in which we could have made a difference. James here in chapter 4 is scolding people for saying, yes, we'll go here for about a year and spend time doing that, and uh, then, you know, we'll go off and do this. And James is saying, you don't understand how time works. Time is a gift, not a guarantee. Yes, we need sleep. Yes, we need to work or attend school. Yes, we need to eat. Yes, we need to have fun things in our lives. But can we honestly say that there's not a single hour in our day that we could use for what God has called us to do? Just one hour to do good. One hour to seek justice. One hour to love neighbor. I have a feeling that there is more than one of us here today who might not be able to find that one extra hour. Why? Because time is a limited resource with many unknown elements. There just aren't enough hours in the day, am I right? There just aren't enough hours in the day. And even when by some miracle there are enough hours in the day, something is going to happen that's going to take our free time from us. Additionally, I imagine that a good number of us here today have very full schedules. I'm trying not to use the word busy so much, but very full schedules. Uh, and those with kids, I imagine, experience this even more. Our very full schedules are a societal expectation. In fact, many people look down on those who have uh, too much free time. And it's not an unfair concern. Scripture, in fact, uh, cautions us against being idle, about being lazy. But there is just as much of a concern with filling our days with unnecessary things. And that's where I want you to really consider your own schedule. How much of your time each week is spent on unnecessary things? 
And I don't mean like, oh, we could give up some of our leisure and fun time. Fun is an important part of the human experience. Have fun in life. But my goodness, if there's not at least one hour out of every single day that we're spending doing something needless, doing something that would be best spent elsewhere, Time is a limited resource, and, and just like any limited resource, it should be used thoughtfully. 168 hours in a week. And, you know, counting that you might be an average American with nine hours of sleep, that's amazing, we'll leave 105 hours on the table. My challenge for each and every one of us today myself more than anybody else, is that we devote our time to God. That time is a gift. And we have been called from the very beginning to be stewards of that which we have been given. It's not our own. It's not like we can purchase more time. We cannot create more time for ourselves. We have the time that we have. And there are many unknowns that are factored into that when we come into the world, when we go out of the world, and everything in between. And so I want to take us back for a moment to our children's lesson. That we stop counting the hours like we do on the clock, one after another, and start counting them based on what is meaningful, what is worthwhile, what makes a difference, what is good. And let us do that for ourselves. Let us do that for one another. Let us do that for God. And let us pray. God of infinity. God whose time knows no end or beginning. God who has called us into an awareness of the time we have. May we take these moments precious as they are, and consider day by day, hour by hour, what is a meaningful way to spend our time. And all along you've been calling us, challenging us to see that, that it's more meaningful to love, love our neighbor than to spend time on our screens, that it's more meaningful to seek justice and mercy than to be sitting idly by. That it is more meaningful to live our lives for you than to live our lives for ourselves, even nothing. Grant us grace and wisdom to see the ways in which we can live more meaningful lives, devoting our time to you, for our time is yours. And so in this time, we lift up to you our brothers and sisters across the globe, as well as those right next door to us, those in, U in Ukraine, Iran, who are suffering in ways we could scarcely imagine, those in Florida who are suffering in ways we might know all too well. We lift them up to you and ask that you would work in their lives according to your good and perfect will, but not without us. Call us, challenge us, allow us to be a part of the time that you are spending on those in need, for our time is much better spent there than whatever we might have conjured for ourselves. We lift up these prayers as well as those which are unspoken and on our hearts this morning as we pray now together that prayer which you taught us and your disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. During this time, I want to invite you to stand as you are able or in spirit and turn in your hymnals to number 399 as we sing together, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Well, before we dismiss, I do need to let you know about one activity that's happening at our sister church, Ashland Place. They are having this afternoon a blessing of the animals. So if you have animals in your life that you are that you cherish as much as St. Francis himself, then uh, take them to Ashland Place this afternoon at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, they have treats there for them as well. <laughs> So, and, and Peanut will be there, you better believe it. He gets blessed every year. He needs it. <laughs> so, receive now this benediction. From wherever you may be or wherever you have to go, go to make meaningful use of the time that you have been given. May it be all for the one who has called you to a meaningful life. May the God of all goodness give you peace. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Go in peace.